This video will cover topic 3.1 for AP Biology, looking at enzymes and what they are. So enzymes are um, proteins that we find within our cells, and their main job is to catalyze or speed up chemical reactions within our bodies. So we're going to look at this test tube here, and when we talk about chemical reactions, um, chemical reactions, like in the body, will happen uh, regardless of whether or not there's a catalyst. So in this test tube here, how the reaction proceeds pretty slowly, what we can do in chemistry, for example, is we can add heat. So when you add um, like heat to a reaction, that heat is what is acting as a catalyst. So that heat would speed up the chemical reaction. But we're not going to heat our body up every time we want to speed up chemical reactions. So therefore, within our bodies, we are going to use enzymes. And enzymes are what are going to act as our biological catalysts to speed reactions up for us. So that we can um, like have our reactions occur at a quick enough rate to support life. So now, how does it work? Well, basically, when the enzyme does chemical reactions, it has, let's put this here. Um, there's basically like two options, right? You can have synthesis, where a molecule is being built by the enzyme, or you can have digestion, where the molecule is going to be broken apart or digested. So um, let's go ahead and talk about, though, enzyme vocabulary and how this um, works. Okay, so here we have an enzyme, and enzymes are proteins. So when you look at the four macromolecules, carbs, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids, um, enzymes fall under the protein category. And so within this enzyme, there's a very specific shape, and the shape determines function. If you change the shape of the enzyme, you run the risk of changing its function. And so the very specific shape that matters in enzymes is called an active site. And the active site is where the reaction is going to occur. So this active site is where um, our substrate is going to attach. So when we think about chemical reactions, you start with a reactant and then you end with a product. So in um, reactions that are controlled or catalyzed by enzymes, we call that reactant now a substrate. Um, and then the reaction occurs here in the active site, and then there's products produced. And so um, when we look at the reaction, um, the end result is the products. And so the active site, cool thing, um, it's not damaged by the reaction. It can be used over and over and over again. So let's go ahead and see um, some examples of this. So here if we start with a glucose or a monosaccharide, um, and we add two together, uh, we get our products, which is a disaccharide. So this here would be your um, reactants and your products. However, if we use an enzyme to do this, here I, you can see the active site. Um, so if you use an enzyme to build and join together these two monosaccharides to build this disaccharide by dehydration synthesis, now, we call those two sugars, we call them the substrate. So it is a reaction occurring, right? You started with reactants, which were the sugar molecules, the glucose, the monosaccharides. And you ended with a disaccharide, the product. So what we started with, we would normally call a reactant. But because it's an enzyme doing the dehydration synthesis, we now call that a substrate. The two sugars are a substrate. Um, and so I also want to point out that these active sites are very specific to their substrates. It's kind of like a lock and a key. They're very um, specific. So this enzyme will only build disaccharides. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead again to summarize. So here, um, your sugar molecules that you're starting with, um, normally those would be called our um, reactants. But because it's an enzyme doing this, we call these substrates. All right. Um, so now I did mention how it's like a lock and a key and very specific. So here, when the substrate attaches to the enzyme, we call this an enzyme-substrate complex. 
and this is where the reaction will occur. Um, so then here's a reaction, and now you have your products. So I also mentioned how an enzyme is very specific um, for the molecules it catalyzes. So here, these two sugars would not fit in the active site, and that enzyme would not build a disaccharide. So um, each enzyme is very specific for the substrate. Okay, so now let's go ahead and take a closer look at how an enzyme interacts with the substrate in order to catalyze that reaction. So here's just a Google image kind of showing the blue area is the um, active site. And you can see I have two molecules that are going to be joined together. So it's a synthesis, it's building. So um, you can see here when the substrate attaches to the active site, the enzyme will kind of like tighten a little bit just around it. This is actually called induced fit. And it will um, orient the substrate molecules so that the bonds can form between them and then form the product. Okay, so let's review. Um, when we talk about enzymes, enzymes are proteins, and when building a protein, there are four steps. You have your primary structure, which is the order of the amino acids that is determined by the DNA. And then you have your secondary structure, which is based on hydrogen bonding between different amino acids, forming either the alpha helix or the beta pleated sheet. And then you have your tertiary structure, and your tertiary structure is based on a couple different bonds and interactions between R groups. We have the um, like nonpolar interactions. Um, so hydrophobic R groups will attract to each other. You have your ionic bonds that form between positive and negative amino acid R groups. You have your disulfide bridges, which are a covalent bond, where you'll have um, a sulfur in like cysteine attach and bond with another sulfur from another cysteine R group. Um, and you also have hydrogen bonds that form between R groups. So when we have the protein folding up, it is dependent on the R groups and how they interact with each other. So you can imagine when we look at an enzyme and its um, properties and how it folds, within that active site, there's also R groups. So here, um, this is kind of a messy looking picture, um, but here, like this, um, these are pro like R groups that have certain charges on them, whether it's positive or negative charges, and those are going to interact with the substrate. So the substrate shape matters, that the shape fits into the active site, but also its chemical properties. What about the positive and negative charges? Do they attract? Do they repel? Um, are there hydrogen bonds that form? So the substrate fitting into the active site needs to be compatible in two ways. In both the shape of the substrate along with the um, charges along that active site. Like what are the active site's surface properties? So when I look at this picture here, I can see the active site is here, and there's certain properties, like surface properties, along that active site. So here I see a positive charge, I see a hydrogen here. So now when that substrate attaches, um, you can see how like it's important that the substrate um, charges are compatible with the surface, or attracted to, the surface properties of that active site's R groups. Okay, and that covers um, basically 2.1 in enzyme, or 3.1, sorry, topic 3.1 in AP Bio enzyme structure.